and welcome back to another episode of Underdog Podcast. That is almost a tongue twister for me to say, even though it's not like complicated words, but whatever. So I want to explain like uh, I like well, I like to explain where my topics are coming from, because I mean, if you when you listen, you probably think like this is some random ass shit. And it might seem that way, but that's why I like to explain where my topic is coming from. Because today I'm going to talk about the uh, the quote-unquote nice guy. And uh, I was exercising and I was watching some YouTube videos. I don't know, I was watching YouTube videos about like parallel universe stories and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden, YouTube algorithm decided to tell me, uh, show me a video about a woman who does a one of those like relationship advice coaches, whatever, which is a odd thing to have to or a job to be doing, I guess that would go on the lines of psychological behavior therapist, something like that. But anyways, and it kind of showed me a video about that and it was talking about ways to stop being the nice guy. And I probably have a, a emotional bias towards this. So as I explain this, I'm gonna try to be as unbiased as possible, but I'll throw it out there. I do have an emotional bias to, towards it. Because I've always been called the nice guy. And this goes back from even me growing up and stuff. When I like, you know, different girls in middle school or some of like that in high school and throughout my lifetime. Everybody always tells me, oh, well, you're the nice guy. You're the nice guy. And, like, they'll say, oh, you know, girls don't always go for the nice guy. They want the bad boy. Or they want someone that isn't a pushover. And I always hated that term, the nice guy. Because, one, I think it's completely... Illogical. It's, I think it's so stupid. I had a friend one time. He told me he was like, "Hey, he's like, uh, you know, you always, you always a nice guy, man. Women don't want that. Like, you gotta be a little bit more aggressive and things like that of that nature." And I got aggravated because I'm like, "I'm not gonna change who I am. I'm gonna be the person I want to be. And if a woman likes me, they like me. If they don't, then I'll die alone." And you can call that prideful or egotistical or whatever. But I'm trying to be the best version I can be every day and continue to grow upon that version and continue to be better and better. And part of me trying to be the best version I can be is me being nice to people. I I constantly talk about that I'm not a nice person. That's why I try to be nice to people. And some women might think, uh, or some men too, might think I'm being overly too nice to certain women or whatever. But really, I'm just responding to the attention or emotion that I am receiving from them. I'm not necessarily always being proactive. A lot of times, you know, I'm being reactive. Because when a woman gives me attention and and I say, like I said, I say a lot of fucked up things. I say a lot of weird shit and I know that can, you know, detest people, detract them from you know, getting them uh, where they don't want to be around me or don't want to listen to what I'm saying or maybe what I say might sound offensive or whatever. So, for me, a woman that I'm attracted to, or whatever, if they're sitting there talking to me and listening to me in my conversation, you know, I appreciate them and I show my niceness towards them. But I also do that towards anybody, whether it's a male or female, because I'm showing my respect and I'm showing my loyalty. I remember my my ex wife uh, around the time where we were going through our issues and stuff, and she told me she was like, you know, you're just you're just too nice to me, and uh, sometimes I just I feel like you're a pushover. I, I, I know I can get wherever I want with you. And that wasn't the case. She always believed that was the case, but it wasn't the case. She just didn't understand. She just didn't realize when I told her no about things. And my, and for me, in our marriage, what I cared about was the money. So she always thought that she was in control of everything, but she wasn't because I was in control. And I manipulated her to let her believe that she was in control because I know that she needed that for her own ego for her own ego, for her own little ego boost, because I also noticed that she shows signs of insecurity. And we all have signs of insecurity, so it's nothing like particularly towards her or whatever, but, you know, after after she was pregnant, after she had my my first uh, child, my daughter, you know, women feel a little insecure, self-conscious about their bodies and stuff, so, you know, I made it, I tried my best to make her feel good and, and things like that. And, even to this day, she'll take that as me being too nice to her. 
They're like, no, you stupid motherfucker. I'm trying to help you out. <laughs> and what it comes down to is, man, I'm going to take a shot at women. A lot of women are just fucking idiots. A lot of men are idiots, too, but we know men are idiots. Like we talk about this all the time in society, in our, in our media, in our, in our movies, TV shows. We always say, the man is always shown as being an idiot and things like that, but, you know, he's kind of lovable. At least he tries, whatever. But women do dumb fucking shit all the time, too. You know, we all do dumb shit. So anytime uh, I had a woman, too, another woman right there, even with my ex-wife, whatever, I guess before I go on to another story, even with my ex-wife, whatever, she was always saying, oh, I know I can get away with this, this, this and that. <laughs> she didn't realize that she can get away with that much shit when I hit her with that, that fucking divorce. Bam. <laughs> How much of a nice guy am I now? Like, I'm, everybody's nice to a certain extent. And you got, you really should appreciate those people who are going out of their way in their, in your life, in your relationships, and where there's a friendship, family members, whatever. If they're going out of their way to be nice to you, appreciate that shit because that's also the same motherfucker who will probably flip a switch and be ready to fucking slit your throat. Like, <laughs> is that bad? Because there are times where, hey, I'm really nice to my ex-wife and in a relationship, but at the same time, I also want to choke the fuck out of this motherfucker with my bare hands. Oh, look, now all of a sudden I'm crazy and psychopathic and, and I got some fucked up tendencies. No, it's just you people take advantage of certain nice, uh, certain people, you take advantage of nice people and things like that in your lifetime. And it goes with men and women and stuff. Often you never really hear too much being spoken about a man rejecting a woman because she's too nice. Usually what a man does or what you normally hear in certain, you know, stories or from your friends or on TV and stuff is the man takes advantage of the nice woman. And then the nice woman or the woman usually doesn't like the nice guy until she gets to a certain age level and she matures and then she all of a sudden always regrets that, damn, why I didn't get the nice guy? That's all. That's what your romance comedy movies are about and shit. All your fucking romance movies, that's, that's basically what they're about. And then you get the little nice happy ending, which is why I don't like watching those movies because it's all bullshit. It's never realistic. In, real, in reality, you're not going for the nice guy or whatever. And the nice woman is getting treated like shit and she's going to stay with him forever. <laughs> Oh, man. I'm probably going to rub people the wrong way when they hear this shit, but it is what it is, man. You can take it how you want to take it. I'm not, this is not a personal attack at anyone. This is just from my own personal experience where things that I've noticed and stuff. And, you know, I could be right, could be wrong. But it's subjective. And I'm trying to find objective meaning in it as well at the same time. But I find it, I find it, I find it interesting as far as like uh, women goes. So I went from that um, marriage, whatever, and I got divorced and I ended it. And then I was seeing another woman, too. And then uh, even that woman was like, oh, you know, you're just too nice and stuff and blah, blah. Fast forward years later, <laughs> she wished she would have stayed with me and stuff and really felt bad and had regret that she didn't be with me and stuff. And I told her before, even during that time, I was like, look, I'm being really nice. I'm being emotional because of what I've been through and it is real recent and stuff where but this is not necessarily who I am this is just a certain side of me right now for this time being and years later I spoke to her again I told her I was like you didn't really know me at the time I was trying to be my nicest because I was trying to compensate for all the evil thoughts I actually had inside of what I wanted to do to certain individuals in my life at that time so I'm trying to compensate for all the bad negative shit that's going on in my head by trying to push out positive energy and be nice to people around me. Like you say, I'm not a nice person because the thoughts I have in my head to th about the things I want to do to other people around me are people that I don't even know. Random strangers are just different shit in life, whatever. Like I have a lot of negative, evil, fucked up thoughts. But <laughs> like I said, I'm trying to be a nice fucking person. But the whole nice guy thing, it just, it just always sounded so stupid because it, it's also the same thing with the friend zone. And some women, you hear women and men say like, oh, no, you're too nice or no, she's just going to put you in the friend zone. And it's like, we come to accept that shit, but it's, it's so stupid. It's stupid. It makes no fucking sense. So this guy is too nice to me and I've, 
And I'm not talking about the the the, the relationship between a man and a woman, or whatever, or wherever the case may be, and uh, and they find someone that that they're that they're talking to and stuff, whatever, and they're nice, but they don't find attractive. I'm not talking about about that shit because if you don't find someone attractive, you need to let them know right right from the start. Like you know, I don't really find you attractive, and we could be friends. But if you also know that person is finds you, finds you attractive and they want to be more than friends, like it's not that hard to figure that shit out. Like you kind you can kind of tell this person or whatever. And if you can't tell, just say that shit right off the bat, and and then let it go. You know, don't be friends with that person. Plain and simple. I cut people off all the time. It's not that hard. And for you out there saying, you know, well, it is hard. No, it's not that hard. It's literally not that hard. I tell my friends this all the time. Like it's not that hard to cut people off. Like. I understand having different uh, issues or you maybe you can be emotionally attached to certain people and, and things like that. But nah, it's not really that hard, man. Someone gets on your fucking nerves, just stop talking to them. Or if someone, you know, you, you can see things going a different way, stop talking to them. I was involved with a woman and stuff, and then, then uh, I didn't... She wanted to just be friends with her, but I felt like we was getting a little bit more closer and closer than friends, and the lines were starting to blur and stuff. I told her how I felt about her, that I wanted to be with her. She said she wanted to be with me. I said, okay. I said, I'll never talk to you ever again. Stop talking to her. <laughs> then months went by, and I ended up talking to her again, but I only started talking to her again because all those emotions I had for her left. And I told her, looked at dead and I told her I loved her, and I walked away. And it's not that hard. It's not that hard. Because I already told the woman that I thought was the love of my life that I had to divorce her. I couldn't be with her no more. And the reason why I even continued to, uh, to, to fight and stuff was because we had kids. But it it was just everything was just so detrimental to the whole sanctity of the household and relationship and, and the family. It was just better off being separated for everybody, even the kids. So and that's a you know that's a harsh reality. That's the truth of things. There's nothing wrong with that. So me being an, a nice guy, or what you always hear is a you know, nice guy, well, you're too nice, and that's why she put you in the friend zone. And I always get mad because I'm like, you know what? If me being nice to her kind of puts me in the friend zone or whatever and things like that, then that's okay. I don't want to be with her. And a lot of women don't really understand that when I'm being nice to them and I'm doing nice things for them and stuff, it's because I could tell that they need someone in their life to be nice to. And I'm trying to be a nice person. And maybe... Maybe I'm in their life for a reason to just, you know, be nice, be there for them, whatever. And I can develop feelings for them and stuff, and that's fine. And they don't develop feelings for me, that's fine, too. But just because I'm nice to you, you put me in the friend zone, that's that's stupid on your part. And I don't, you know, you can take it how you want to take it, but that's that's dumb. So I'm listening to this life coach or this uh, relationship coach stuff. She's saying, you know, you can be the nice guy, but you won't be the nice guy in the friend zone. You want to be a nice guy to be in a relationship. And a woman can break the shit down all she wants to, but at the end of the day, she got to address her own insecurities because you got to question yourself. Like, I guess, like, I'm not talking, like, again, I'm not talking about someone that's, if, if you're not attracted to this person or whatever. I'm not talking about it. I'm talking about, you know, when, you, when you're around a woman or a man, a man and... You know, you, you're being nice to that person, whatever and stuff, and you kind of feel attracted to them. But, you know, some women get, or some women and some men, maybe, probably just get a little bit more turned off because they're being, this person is a little too nice and they think this person is a pushover. No, no, no. This person is being nice because they're probably just trying to do their best to win you over. And trying to win you over is being nice because they want you to like them because they're nice, because. If you like me and I'm being an asshole to you, that means you got some real fucked up issues. <laughs> and, and and even like the whole friend zone thing or whatever. I might go off a little topic. I might scatter around in the shit, but whatever. Bear with me. Stay with me on this one. The whole friend zone shit, I think, is so stupid, too. Because any great relationship that can withstand the length of time, you have to have a foundation and that foundation is a fucking friendship how many married couples you hear them talk about each other that they're best friends they didn't fall in love then decide to become best friends no their friendship was was building from the start so the whole friend zone thing is is stupid because you're already friends now you could choose to build something with that person you could choose not to build something with that person but you, you got to start from somewhere 
and, and at the core of any long-term relationship, marriage or whatever, is that companionship. And that companionship is that fucking friendship. That's what it is. I have never went I have never tried to be with a woman that I wasn't already aware of who she was. That I haven't already studied and I haven't already paid attention to and that I, that I didn't already have some type of friendship or relationship with. Like all the women in my life that I ever tried to date or do anything with, I had had some type of friendship with. And then like there's probably a couple women in my lifetime or whatever that I'm still very close friends with that are like best friends to me. But and I never had no sexual desire or no desire to be in a relationship with them. But like it what it comes down to is you gotta start somewhere. <laughs> you gotta have that foundation, man. You don't build a hop a house from the top down, do you? Build it from the bottom up, right? At least that's how it works in this physical dimension, right? In our fucking physical reality, in this universe. But my my thing is, the whole friend zone and the nice guy and stuff. And it's like, no, 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 no. What you really hear is a lot of miscommunication, a lot of misunderstanding. And a lot of people talk about relationship stuff. But the real honest truth is, majority of you motherfuckers have no idea anything about our relationship. And most of us don't know what the fuck we're doing. And we're all just winging the shit. <laughs> That's what it comes down to. We're all winging this shit. We can talk about, you know, this we stay together this long because we do this. Everybody's out here just fucking winging this shit because none of us know what the fuck is going on. And we're trying to figure it out. We're not trying to figure it out. Or we think we're trying to figure it out and we and we didn't figure it out. Or we thought we had to figure it out. And re- yeah, same thing. And then it, what happened was we don't know what the fuck is going on. Because I can sit here and tell you that, like, uh, the woman that I want to be with, is going to be my friend first. She's going to be my close confidant. She's going to be someone I always talk to and I, and I tell my, you know, random strange ideas. Of. And she's going to be someone I also have some romantic interest. But there's going to be times where if we stay together a long time, I'm not going to want to touch them. Because that happens. I get tired with life, get stressed with life. She gets stressed with life, get tired of where I bow depression. She can have her own little mental issues or whatever the case may be. And you get turned off from sexual intercourse. You get turned off from, you know, you don't feel attractive or you don't find anyone attractive. That can happen in a relationship. So when you strip all that shit, guess what happens? You're left with a fucking friend that you, you think is cute sometimes. And sometimes you look at the motherfucker and be like, you know what? Why'd she do that shit? Fucking ugly. I don't even know why I talk to this motherfucker. You have those thoughts. And there's nothing wrong with that. That is life. And if you can sit here and say you never had those thoughts, man, you're in denial. Or, you, or maybe you're just not aware that you're not that in tune with your own personal thoughts, with your inner consciousness, because that's, that's truthful. That's truthful. That's truthful. If you're, you're the person you with, if they happen to gain weight or whatever, something like that, you like people. You always hear people say, you know, you love them no matter what and stuff. Where I'm like, bullshit. Bro, that's not. You're gaining weight stuff. That means you're becoming more unhealthy, or you, your your mental stability is off, whatever and stuff. Whatever. Yeah, I still love and care for you, but. If you don't do nothing about it, eventually I'm going to find you unattractive because the things I found attractive about you are gone. And I'm not talking about the physical attractiveness. I'm talking about the the emotional and mental stability that went along with you working out or you trying to eat healthy or you you know, you know caring about yourself. Because if you show me that you're not caring about yourself, now I got to care more about you. That shit is annoying. <laughs> so the, 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 whole, the whole nice guy thing... You hear all the time, I just think it's stupid. Women like, you know, I just, I just don't really, I like him, but, you know, he's just a little too nice. And anytime my female friends tell me that, I was like, you're an idiot. I find out that, like, you're an, I tell them, you're an idiot. It's like, you know, but you just don't understand or whatever, you know, you're not a woman. It's like, no, you're an idiot. You're an idiot. You have been dogged so much in your fucking life that it scares you that someone is being nice to you. Because that's what it is. It's anxiety. It's stress. Those are, are you know, primitive uh, things that uh, that happen in our brain to you know to keep us alert from you know happening something happen again or whatever because the nice guy you did have before you thought was nice but he played your dumb ass because it happens to all of us we all get played you, you got played and next thing you know the whole so called nice guy the nice person whatever you know, flip the the script next thing you know he's fucking abusive and cheating on you and doing all types of fucked up shit super manipulative and everything. Got you. <laughs> and so now you're like, oh, you know, the nice guy. I don't want a nice guy and stuff. Because you associate that nice guy mentality with that 
split personality where this person is going to be a complete asshole to you after a certain point because now you're using fear. And what comes down to majority relationships is fear. We're afraid to take that step. We're afraid of what might happen next. We're afraid based on past experiences. That's what it all comes down to. There's not there's nothing more, nothing less than that. It's all is your own personal fear. That's it. You're afraid of the nice guy. You're afraid of the nice woman based on something that happened to you in the past. And I have felt like this. I have questioned myself because I was married about five years. I think I was with my ex-wife about six or seven years. And and now I've been divorced about eight years. I have maybe like two relationships in the span of eight years. And it wasn't even really concrete where we were both on the same page for one of the relationships. And then another relationship was only like four months. So I've basically been single for the most part for eight fucking years. And there's been, there's been times where I've been battling with them. Like, you know what? It's because of me. And I try to fix myself. And I try to do different things and stuff, whatever. And I try to be better at certain different thing, uh, certain things, whatever. I know I don't show as much of affection. So I try my best to show affection. Like uh, towards a woman or whatever, and I try my best to, to always show attention and be loving and caring or whatever, things of that nature. Because once again, I've always been labeled as a nice guy, but I'm like, I'm not even that fucking nice of a caring person. Like, I'm being nice because I want you to like me because I'm nice. And it's not a front, it's not a, uh, you know, a facade. I'm doing that as a mutual respect thing because I want you to be nice as well. You treat others the way you want to be treated, Correct. So therefore, I'm being nice to you because I want and I expect you to be nice to me as well. Because that is what a mutual relationship is. I'd be nice to my family members because I want them to be nice to me. I'm nice to my friends because I want them to be nice to me. And at the same time, I'm trying to better myself and just genuinely be nice without wanting anything in return or whatever. I don't necessarily want anything in return from them other than, you know, just the respect level and you know the mutual effort but when you you have these relationships you have these different women and stuff they're they're afraid of the nice guy because of what something has happened in the past because guess what the fucking person that broke their heart or ripped their shit apart and stuff whatever who cheated on them do all these things whatever and the same thing for men too guess who that person was it was a nice guy it was a nice girl that did those things to you you and they fucked you over it probably some narcissist because I feel like we all have a lot more nar- narcissists in our life. There's probably a lot more narcissistic people walk around than we really know. And we're really starting to feel like one in fucking five people are narcissistic. But that's just my little tidbit observation that I'm just going to throw out there. But the whole the whole nice guy, you know, motherfuckers is dumb. Like, you're just afraid. You're dumb. You're being dumb. You're being afraid. And it's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Like I said, you, you put someone in the friend zone. You know, you don't put someone in the friend zone. The friend zone is not a real thing. You should be friends, point blank, period. That that you should be friends first. You should always be friends first. And it's funny because if you listen to certain uh, relationship advice or whatever, they'll tell you, you know, you should be friends first. And they'll tell you about, oh, you know, you know some women will be like, you know, it's just no, there's no infatuation there. You know, there's just no spark and stuff. I just want that spark. I mean, my ex-wife had told me this one time before long time ago and she's like you know this, that spark isn't there anymore and stuff like that i'm like no shit is not there like we you know, had two kids now you're working i'm working like <laughs> we're barely seeing each other we everybody got schedules and things like that and stuff you come home going straight to sleep because you're tired and stuff and i'm doing things with the kids and things like that like it all it's, it's whatever but that's part of life so you this is something you have to work on so i did my best to try to work on it and, you know, she went her own direction, did whatever she wanted to do. But the thing is, like, you have to have that friendship because that f- when all that shit is gone and taken away, you want to look at that person and be like, you know what? I just like spending the rest. I just want to spend the rest of my life with you just because I just like fucking being with you. And as long as you have that foundation, the love, the, uh, the spark, you know, the sexual, sexual desire, all those things that equate to romance in your life that you think you understand will come back. Because that's another thing, too. We talk about love, but we don't understand love. We think we do, but we don't. We don't understand love. 
We, we really don't. And that's the sad truth. We talk about it, but we have no actual comprehension of love. We think we do. But when you describe love, you know, you, we always say it's, you try to describe it, but really you can't describe it because you, you really can't even put into words what it is because it, you can't even know if it even actually fucking exists. It's just something that you know you feel or, or <laughs> it could just be chemicals in your brain telling you that so you can mate and reproduce and continue on the species. <laughs> you don't fucking know anything. But what you can know, what you can understand is a friendship, a relationship, and some uh, something of, of that foundation and that nature that you build upon and that you can hold on to and that you work on. That's what you can do. So the whole nice guy thing, just toss that shit out the window, man. Just toss that shit out the window. The nice girl thing, toss that shit out the window. Find someone that you can enjoy being around with, that you can do things, whatever. And if you find some remote uh, and you find some romantic interest in them or whatever, or you know, if you want to kiss them or you have some sexual energy towards them or whatever, then you go for it. You try it out. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. There's a lot of things too with relationships and stuff. I know I'm going all completely off topic where I was trying to keep on, but fuck it. There's a lot of things with relationships where wherever it happens, happens, man. Enjoy those good times. And, you know, learn from the bad times. And if y'all stay together, you stay together. If you don't, you don't. Fuck it. It's whatever. You try. As long as you try. This is all you can do is try. And everyone has their limits on how long they will try. Some women can say that I didn't try long enough with my ex-wife and try to really work things out and stuff. My ex-wife could probably feel like that. But you know what? I don't give a fuck. I tried to the limit that I was willing to do. So once again... She thought I was a nice guy. She thought I was someone that I was being a pushover. But no, I had my limits. She just didn't fucking know. I wasn't going to tell her because those are my own personal thoughts that I'm not sharing with no one. I know what my limit is. Everyone knows what their limit is in relationship. And once you reach it, you reached it. And you're like, you know what? Fuck this motherfucker. I'm done. And hey, that could be probably why I'm still you know, single. I had one friend tell me, you know, that's like a, that could be intimidating to women or whatever because... I have a point in my mind that, you know, I know what I'm going to do. I know what I'm going to deal with. And you can either accept it or not. And I'm and I'm not going to fight with you. I'm not going to fight for you. I'm going to walk away. I had one female that I was dating at a time, uh, at a certain point in time. She broke up with me because she wanted to go off and uh, do her own thing. She wanted to work on herself more or whatever and things like that. And she didn't feel like she could do that in a relationship, which is perfectly fine. I was, you know, years older than her, so I understood it's no big deal. I was okay with it. I'm not going to lie. I felt a little relieved when the relationship ended because I also was getting stressed by her too. And I was like, man, because I wanted to be, I had for a long time, I was single and I wanted to be in a relationship again. But at the same time, once I was in it, I was like, fuck, I got to talk to this motherfucker all the time. Like I got to really listen to her complain about this and that and stuff. Where it's one thing when it's a text message or something, but when it's right there in my face and I'm like, ah, shit, I just wish she shut the fuck up so I could play video games or something. Like, I know, I know the type of person I am. I, I, now I've been single for far too long. So the, the, the length that I've been single now or whatever, I know that it can be an issue. Because I'm used to alone time. I'm used, I'm used to being by myself. I, I, I enjoy my solitude. So I know that could be an issue. But when she had uh, broke up with me or whatever, maybe probably a little bit mutual, but when, she, when it ended, she... I didn't try to chase her or fight for her, and she kind of felt a little fucked up about it. She was like, you know, you, I can't believe you didn't try to fight for me. You didn't try to make it work or anything. I was like, no. And she's like, that's just kind of messed up. You shouldn't have did that, you know. So like, if you really care, you would have fought for me. I was like, if you really care, you would have broke up with me. <laughs> was, my mindset was like, wait a minute, man. Like. You know what? Like, if you wanted to make this shit work, we could have kept trying to talk it out and figure it out or whatever. But you was ready to, you know, end it and stuff so you can go off and do your own thing and just focus on yourself. And I was like, all right, bye. Bye. Because I already put up with one thing from the woman that I was, that I was married to that I was going to spend the rest of my life with that I had kids with and stuff. After that, I was like, fuck everybody else, bro. I'm not putting up with the same shit. Like, I'm, yeah, this is my limit. I know what my limit is. I kind of let you know, 
and and I'm not gonna tell you exactly what my point of you know that I reached, but I'm letting you know exactly you know hey this this and that blah blah. If these things are reached or whatever, or if something like this goes sideways, or hey you tell me you want to break up or whatever, guess what? That's what it is. We're broken up. I'm not I'm not going. I don't go backwards. I don't go back. I did that one time. Of course, it was my ex-wife, but I had kids with her. If I never had, if I never had kids with my ex-wife, I'd have divorced her a lot quicker than what I did. I'd have left her a lot quicker than than why I divorced her and stuff. I, I, it would have happened so much more fucking faster, and I never would have talked to this motherfucker ever again for the rest of my life. Like, and the other thing, like her sister is like my best friend, <laughs> and I still would never talk to this motherfucker. I would have never looked at her ever again. But we have kids together, so so there you go. And she knows that too. It is what it is. But it's I don't go backwards. And and so so for the woman I was dating at the time when she broke up with me and she was so shocked by it, she's like, I can't believe you didn't. I was like, why why? Why why would why, were you shocked by? You broke up with me. What you thought that I was just gonna try to fight and be with you? No. No. I'm not that person. No one should be that person. I don't want to call it, I don't want to say it's maturity or growth or whatever, because then I don't want to feel like I'm kind of boasting my own, my own personal growth or whatever. But it's just, to me, it's, it's, well, it's knowing your self-worth. That's what it all comes down to, your self-worth. I think I said it fucked up the first time, but yeah, it's your self-worth. Knowing exactly what you're worth, knowing exactly what you're, capable of putting up with knowing what you will push the limits or boundaries of in your own psyche for your own mentality and knowing once once it's reached to let it go and move on with your life and that's what it is and could that be a reason why i'm single i don't know i mean i try to be with women and it's just I, I, you know i don't even like to talk about that because my thing is I'm not talk about it, but my, my whole mindset was People ask why am I single or, you know, you're still single or whatever. Or you can't find a woman or you need to change this. Or I had one friend tell me I need to lower my my beauty standards, I guess, or whatever, because I didn't find a certain female that she tried to hook me up with attractive. And I was like, I just didn't find attractive. That's just for me. Mainly because, uh, she, to be honest with you, she was at a certain weight level. And I care about fitness in my life and stuff. So I want to be with someone who also cares about fitness in their life not necessarily that they're skinny i didn't say that because you could be skinny too i don't like you i don't find you attractive i'm talking about someone who cares about fitness because i always exercise my whole life and even though i can't exercise the the, the ability that i used to I, I i still love fitness if anything i love going on fucking walks or whatever or just even picking the fucking weight up and dropping it down like it's good for my you know mental stability it helps me fight my depression and you know it's part of my life I love sports and athletics and stuff, whatever. So that's the type of person that I find attractive. And or someone that even my ex wife, she was, was now she's not an athletic person. She ain't got no fucking hand eye coordination, but she was she's a dancer. She danced in high school and stuff on the dance team and stuff. So there's still some type of physical fitness to her or whatever the case may be. But my thing is like you gotta you got to know your self-worth. You got to know what you, you know, you want to put up with. You got to know what you want to deal with and stuff and stick to it and don't bend for anybody. So the women I try to be with and stuff, you know, I, I, I pictured them in, in my head and maybe I saw the best qualities in them that they didn't see themselves. Maybe I ignored the red signs or whatever, but you know, I was willing, my thing is I'm optimistic. I'm always willing to give it a shot because worst case scenario, Nothing fucking happens. Like you, worst case scenario, we break up. Okay, whoop de do. I can go. I can go back and be, you know, semi friends with you. I can go back and still have some type of cordial relationship with you. Why? Because I do it with all the the person I don't like at all, my ex wife, all the fucking time. So if I can deal with this motherfucker, and I'm forced to because I have kids with her, I can handle being around another person that I don't necessarily have the same feelings for anymore, or whatever. Which I still do for some, for the most part, for some women in my life. That I, you know, I was explaining to the female earlier. And now I, I still talk to her every now and then. I still hang out with her and stuff. And I do do things with her and stuff. But the emotions aren't there anymore. And you could be like, well, you never really loved her or whatever. If your emotions aren't like that, if your emotions aren't the same anymore. No. People, you got you to gotta understand the concept of time. Time does not exist. 
We think of a past and a future, but there is none. All it is is present. All is present. We use the future to try to imagine what can happen next to, to plan out our, you know, whatever will be happening at the present time in the future. And we use a past to help us determine, you know, what what we don't want to deal with in the present or in the future. But the only thing that exists is the moment now. And that's all you can think of. So that's what I think of is the moment now. How I how I how I feel. I know I felt for you in the past, but I know I don't feel that way for you anymore. And that's it. It's that easy. Because why would I feel for you the same way again? No. I gave it my shot. I put my uh, I put myself forth. And you know, I told you how I felt about you and stuff, or whatever. And that's it. And 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 whatever the case may be, it is what it is, and you go on about it. So when you have this nice guy in your life, or whatever, or this nice woman, this nice girl in your life and stuff, and you're thinking, maybe this person's too nice, too nice, and blah, blah. How about you just fucking, I don't know, just try. Try, see what happens. See what happens. <laughs> because clearly, you know, the shit you were doing before hasn't worked out, so try this one. I try a different type of women and stuff. Like I say, I don't really have a particular type of women, but even, even as I talk to you about, you know, being around a woman with fitness stuff, I have been around women who have not been in the fitness and stuff or whatever. I've been around women that have been small. I've been around women that have been a little bit uh, above, uh, average size or whatever, or whatever the case may be, may be. They'll call themselves big at the time and stuff. doesn't fucking matter. Like, I'm just trying to chase what I think is a, not chase, I'm, I'm attracted to a certain personality type that I think that at the time that I feel I'm attracted to. And if it happens... It happens if it works out, and if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. I go back to being by myself, which is a fucking person I love being around the most anyways. <laughs> now, that sounds fucking narcissistic, but, you know, whatever. Kiss my ass. <laughs> because I, at the end of the day, I enjoy being around myself. And if I can clone myself and make a female version of myself, I probably would do it just so I could be with myself. <laughs> because... That's what I mean, and you might think that sounds weird and crazy and stuff. Like I said, narcissistic, but really, that's what you're doing. You're trying to find someone that reminds you of yourself. Well, you know what? I can't say that because there's a lot of people that truly don't like themselves. They don't like themselves, but at the same time, they don't want to change themselves either because they don't want to acknowledge how much of themselves that they don't like. And that seems to me what you get oftentimes when you hear someone talk about the nice person and the life stuff. Oh, they like him. You know, he's really nice, but I really don't like him. So why are you still talking to this person? Stop talking to this person. Hello, oh, no, he's a really good friend. Or, oh, she's a really good friend. You know, you know now you're using that person. Because this person is trying to be nice to you and stuff. And... And maybe this person's attracted. Hell, maybe this person's attracted to you and wants to be with you. Maybe not. Because there's also a lot of confusion. Not confusion. There's also a lot of misconception. So because someone, there's a lot of my female friends where I'm being nice to them and stuff. And, and my, other, my other friends or whatever tell me, like, oh, she doesn't want to be with you. Or maybe she likes you. Or they're friends on you. And then there's times where I even attempted to try to be with them. And when I mean be with them, I mean, like, just on the same page where we're fucking and we're dating. Or that's it. Because that's, that's the extent of what I'm going to anyways. But, you know, people are like, oh, no, maybe she didn't like it. Or it's like, oh, you know, I really only see you as a friend. But it's like, no, it's not necessarily about a friend that you see me as. It's about yourself or whatever. Because you don't necessarily know I, I like you as a friend. You don't necessarily know it because the majority of my female friends, all my female friends, I don't really want to be with them. I don't really want to be I don't want to be with them. Like, that's, that's what it's always been. I want to have a friendship first. But during that friendship period and stuff, I'm also evaluating whether or not I can be with them. And 99% of the time, it is I don't want to be with them. Because <laughs> that's what the case is. And some females that put me in the friend zone, I know they think they put me in the friend zone. But really, like, no, motherfucker. I was always your friend first. I always wanted to be your friend. I always just wanted to be your friend. And I was open to having something different. You know, I'll take, like I said, I'll take a, a chance because worst case scenario, you know, I don't talk to you no more. You ain't part of my life. It, it doesn't bother me because I have certain people in my life that are fixated and they've been in my life for 
fucking 15, 20 some years stuff. Then I have my own fucking kids. I have my parents, my sister, my 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 brother. I have people in my fucking life that I'm not alone. So I don't feel that loneliness. And yes, I don't have someone I wake up to other than my fucking cat who, who wakes me up purring in my fucking face. But that doesn't bother me. Because, you know, I also don't want to wake up and have someone breath in my fucking face as well either. That's what I think about. But when you, when you think about... So the next time for some of you females or for some of you males, when you think about a nice person in your life, one, get out your you know, get your head out of your own ass because just because this person being nice does not necessarily mean this person wants to relationship with you. They might just be nice because they want to be a nice person or because they 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 feel like you've been being nice to them. So they're you know, being reciprocate of uh, they're they're trying just to bring back uh or Trying to you know show you the same type of level of appreciation, respectfulness, and nice niceness. Is that a word? Niceness? That's not a word. That's not a word, right? Uh, fuck that. That's not a word. But whatever. You know what I mean? Maybe they're just trying to show you the same type of you know energy, and that's it. And whatever happens, happens. Something you gotta really just go. You really gotta be fluid in life. You gotta be willing to go with the flow and willing to accept change and. Not always be resistant toward it. And just, you know, wherever it happens, happens. Because at the end of the day, you know, it's your health. You know, you have things in life you can do. You, you know, you're going to go off and be and, and do certain things and enjoy life and stuff. And don't be so caught on uh, whether or not your relationship works out and stuff. Obviously, I'm talking more about single people and stuff. But, uh, you know, don't be so caught up in, you know. Someone saying they friend zoned you and stuff. I just I hate that term, friend zone. It's so stupid because it, it lets me, it lets me know that we really don't know what the fuck we're talking about when we talk about relationships. <laughs> we really don't know what we're talking about. And someone can be listening to this and, and criticize me, saying I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about because I have a failed marriage and I haven't been in a relationship since then. And you can tell me that hey, and you know, and that and that's a fair criticism. You can say that. That's your opinion. Do I think it's correct? Fuck no. <laughs> but, you know, that's your opinion and stuff. And that's something that can be debatable or whatever. But you can also argue that the more and more that I become more in tune and more self-aware and, and and have an understanding of also the people around me as well and potential relationship partners I find in female, I can also, you can also say that maybe I put myself in, into a different uh, I don't want to say level or category, but just into a different area that most people aren't in. I mean, I put myself into a different mind space that most people aren't in. And that could be why I haven't found anyone where because I have friends that have told me that too. Like you just could I have friends that have told me, I'd be like, Hey, I say I got a lot of female friends. And I'm like, Hey, y'all, you know, you, what the fucking point of having a female friend? If you ain't got no fucking single friends yourself that you can hook me up with, like, you all fucking useless, bro. <laughs> like, like, help me out. What is going on? And then when they be like, oh, nah, nah, you, don't, you wouldn't like this girl or whatever. I was like, oh, you know what? No, nah, you're too good for her and stuff. Because that's also what you hear a lot of times, too, when they talk about the nice guy. And they always, you always hear them say, you know what? You're too good for that person or you're too good for me. And I was having a conversation with my friend, the other day, and then I was talking about, you know, you hear, I showed her a video I seen on YouTube and stuff about how women struggle or how some women really don't want a good man because, you know, they, they have insecurity themselves and they're not really at a level where they can handle a good man or whatever. And then, uh, and then she was saying, yeah, I could kind of see your point too. And, stuff. and then she was like, well, don't take this the wrong way too. You know, sometimes a girl could just not be into you. And that aggravated me. Only because, like, uh, she put it into that perspective, but I t and, and and I wasn't aggravated by her opinion, but I was just aggravated by her, you know, just her perspective. I wouldn't say aggravated, but just a little annoyed by her perspective because, it was like, I, I'm, I told her, I was like, we're talking about two different things. I'm not talking about a woman that I just recently met or whatever at a bar, at a grocery store, or some shit, like, you know, or on Tinder or anything I just recently met. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about someone that I have been talking to for a while, for months, whatever, who have, have developing, uh, you know, a friendship or some type of relationship with and stuff. I'm talking about that. That's what I'm talking about and stuff. Where, where, 
And I know that they will struggle being with a good man because they're so used to certain things. And I know their insecurities because they have told me their insecurities. Which makes you wonder, how many how many intimate moments do you have with a person that is quote unquote your friend, but at the same time, they're they're also the nice guy that you don't see yourself dating. And see, and even my whole perspective on what I'm talking about, a nice guy, what the lady was talking about in the video, she was talking about there's two nice guys, the ones that are nice guy in your friend zone, the ones that are nice guys that, you know, you want them to be nice in a relationship. And uh, I can't even fucking finish listening to the video because I knew what she, like, I, I'm not going to say I knew for a fact because I was I didn't listen to the rest of the video. And I really was just, I was just aggravated just hold the whole thing because you're trying to uh, take something that, I, I guess you're trying to put a different perspective on something, but it's really not about the other person, it's about you yourself. And see, when you hear people talk about a nice guy or a nice girl they don't want, so it has nothing to do about that person. It's about you yourself. And in fact, a lot of things, what it comes, a lot, what a lot of things boil down to is yourself. Because I can sit here and talk about being single, and you know, like I said, I could put myself in a different area of mind space that some women maybe they're not yet to to be in or whatever. But at the same time, I'm also not a person that is easy to be with like especially at this point in my life because i'm so used to being by myself and stuff where i can give you a bunch of attention i can text you one day and be social but also you know maybe text you once the, the next day or whatever in the next couple of days and just be in my own world and really not be doing that other than just playing video games or, or you know doing a podcast or just reading fuck, some fucking science article or something because now at this point like i value my independence so much where you in my life, you need to either match that the same type of value or surpass that value. Because if you are in my life and you don't bring the same type of value, then, you know, you're fucking useless. I'm not going to talk to you. I'm not going to be around you. But I'm going to friend zone you first because I need to I need to know that I can count on you as a friend as a and basically see if you're a fucking decent person. Because my attractiveness does not come from your looks. My attraction does not come from your body. It does not come from your ass. It does not come from your titties. It does not come from your breasts. It does not come from your fucking hips. You know, it's not about your vagina. It's not about the things you do with your mouth. My attractiveness comes from your personality. And, and, and then the looks and other stuff does play a part into it, but it's not, it's not the first thing. What makes me be attracted to a woman is their certain personality traits that I perceive them to have. And me... You know, being a friend with them or whatever for a certain period of time lets me or gives me the opportunity to evaluate them even more as a potential mate. Because if you have noticed, everything is a long fucking thought process for me. And I feel like it should be that way for everybody. But it's also more that way for me even more now because I could say maybe it was that way when I was a, a kid, when I was young, because I got married at a young age. I think I got married at 20. Or 19? I don't even fucking remember. But uh, <laughs> I know I got married at a young age and stuff and had kids at a young age. But and even before then, my mindset still was like, a, so, you know, I just wanted, I wanted a female to be my friend. Like when I married my ex-wife, I felt like she was my best friend. She was someone I laughed and played with and stuff and I had fun with. And that's what I wanted. Someone that I can have fun with and stuff at that time. And then build upon it and stuff. And then I also found other features. But like I said, she wasn't someone I just randomly knew. So I also knew the bad side of her and things that she had done that I didn't like or whatever. Because I have our, I was, I'm, I'm best friends with her sister. So I knew her sister first. And then I kind of recognized her and saw her and stuff and became attracted to her or whatever. But it was only over a period of time. And there's times where I've seen women and I've been attracted to them and stuff. And I, I approached them or whatever, but it's been it's still over a period of time where I'm really monitoring and paying attention to them. And like I said, it's probably even more so after I've been divorced because <laughs> I thought I was right the first time. Psych wasn't. I mean, you know, shit happens. Things people do different things. I, 
you know, people always say, oh, you know, people change. I don't really believe no one change. I just don't think you realize how many sides there are to you and your own personality. Because we're simple and complex all at the same time. So I don't think people realize how complex they are and stuff to their own personality and, and how quickly they can go down a path that they didn't really want to be down and then just be stuck in a repeating cycle and stuff of doing things that they didn't really want to do. So my, my whole mindset is like, there's certain women that I really want to be around and stuff, and certain women I want to do things with or whatever. And ah man, fuck it, I lost my old train of thought. <laughs> I was trying to, I was trying to like ramble off and shit and bring it back around. And I was trying to buy myself time. Cause like I said I do this shit in one take, but I fucked that all up, man. <laughs> man, so I, so I apologize if I really had you on a reel and I had a, like a really good point I was making. Cause I just fucked that shit all up, bro. I just forgot every fucking thing. <laughs> That's funny. Oh man. Oh man, this shit's never gonna blow up, man. No one's gonna listen to this shit. They're gonna be like, what the fuck? This dude can't even fucking focus, man. He needs someone to buy him to help keep him on track. Or maybe you should write some notes or something. <laughs> uh, it's starting to come back to me. But yeah, so just it makes me think about how like uh like I said, the word friend zone, it makes me laugh. I, cause I literally have friend zone every woman I've ever been attracted to. Even though women and my male friends have been like, oh man, she friend zoned you. No, I've always friend, friend zoned a woman first. But if I say in that aspect, people are like, no, that's not the same. But, but that's exactly what it is. I friend zone every woman first because I don't, I don't know who this motherfucker is. I find some things about them attractive, but I'm a friend zone this motherfucker, and then, and then whatever happens happens, because that's what it comes down to for me. Whatever happens happens. If we try to have a relationship, we try. If we don't, then we don't. If we remain friends, we remain friends. And then sometimes with some of my female friends, I'll, I'll throw shots at them like, "Hey, oh, come over to my house. Hey, let's go out to eat." And if my one free, if my one female friend hears this stuff, <laughs> she probably thinks I'm talking about her. <laughs> I probably am talking about you. Whatever. You'll be all right. But the thing is, like, I'll be like, hey, you come out to eat with me. Come out to eat with me. Or, you know, let's go here. Or, hey, I'll take you out to dinner and stuff. I'll make you feel special, whatever. It's because I feel like doing those things. Because I feel like being nice. I feel like being generous. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, the world would be better off if motherfuckers really try to be nice. Does not mean she's going to push me over. Does not mean she's going to do anything to, 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 um, May seem like I'm a like a pushover that she can get away with anything with me. One, no one can get away with anything with anybody. You make a choice, and when you make a choice, that person is gonna is gonna have some type of reaction to it, and you don't know what that person's reaction is every single time. You might think you do, but one time they're fucking surprise you. Hey, you ever watch that show Snapped on Oxygen? Well, I used to love watching that shit because all the women, oh, everything was fine, fine, fine. Oh, you know, this and that. Their man is doing whatever and ever. Next thing they'll snap, stab him, motherfucker. He's dead. <laughs> Guess not so nice anymore. Not that much pushover anymore. And you can say, oh, this person just didn't stand up for himself stuff. But, you know, when you're in a relationship, you know, you can never really stop anyone from doing anything that they want to do. So when you're in a relationship, where if someone's gonna do something, there's nothing you can do about it. All you can do is, is have your own reaction to it. That's it. But like I said, I, I friend zone every woman that I've ever been in a relationship with. Period. Period. Hey, I friend zone my ex-wife. I had, I broke up with her for 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 a, a reason and stuff over the summer, and then and I friend zone her. But I don't believe in a friend zone because it's stupid. It, it doesn't exist. It doesn't. Basically, what it comes down to, you either attracted to a person and you want to build a relationship with them, or you're not attracted to a person and you don't want to build a relationship to them. And really, majority of the time, you're just trying to figure this shit out. And that's all it is. And that's all it is. Because if you place someone in the friend zone, are they actually even your real friend? Or were you just trying to figure out whether or not you want to have build something with them? But I said, like, I, I have need, the woman I want to be with is going to be a friend first. Plain and simple. And that's not even the case. And like I said, I have a lot of female friends, but just because I have a lot of female friends does not mean that they're, those are all the women I friend zone and stuff. It's just, I, I just was friends with them. I tend to have more female friends because I understand uh, some of the things they've been through in relationships because 
the things they talk about, I have been through. So I vibe with them better. And then, uh, and then a lot of my male friends, you know, they talk about sports or they talk about women and shit. And I really don't want to talk about women because, I mean, I ain't got no really, I ain't got no women to talk about. <laughs> I ain't got nothing to talk about. Like my friends, my male friends, they can talk about, oh, you know, their wives or their, their girlfriends or whatever. And I'm talking about past experience stuff and I'm talking about some scattered women throughout, but I'm like, you know, at the same time, I'm like, oh, whatever. I was like, ah, oh, fuck that. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't put up with it or not put up with it. I'd be like, ah, oh, fuck that. I'm, I'm done with this. I'd be like, I'm done. I'll just break with her. And so my female friends, when they tell me about their 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 males, uh, their their ex boyfriends or their boyfriends or where the case may be or whatever, sometimes I'm like, a lot of times I say, you know, just stick it out and fight through it and so whatever. And then sometimes I'm like, oh fuck it, just don't talk to them no more. And they're like, oh, you know, this is hard. I can't do this stuff, whatever. I'm like, yeah, you can. It's actually not that hard. Just don't talk to them. Don't talk to them. Go fucking talk to a new person. Move on with your life. Good people all say, oh, how do you move on so quickly and stuff or whatever? It goes back to, to, to the one girlfriend, the relationship I had and stuff, and she broke with me, and she was like, how do you just move on so fast and stuff or whatever, blah, blah. I was like, but that was yesterday. That's the past. I'm in the present, looking towards the future. That's why. Because <laughs> we experience time in a lyrical, uh, in, a, in a linear fashion, you know, going on online, going on, especially in a, you know in American Western culture, reading from left to right. So that's the way I fucking experience time. So that's what I fucking do. And even so, no matter what, it's still in the present. I'm still in the present, and in the present right now, I'm not with you. So I'm gonna do things that I've, you know I'm not thinking about you. I'm moving on with my life. But the whole friend zone and the nice guy thing is just it's it's bullshit. It's just bullshit. It's just it just shows our misunderstanding of, of of what we think about relationships. Because, well, to be honest with you, a lot, all our ideas of relationship are not our, our own ideas. When you think about a woman or a male or whatever a partner that you want to be with, think of that thought. Hold on to that thought, and I guarantee that first thought you think of, it can it relates to some movie, some TV show, some image you've seen. Maybe something you've seen in your own personal lifetime with your uh, your parents or whatever, or maybe as a sibling, it's just, or maybe someone in a relationship you've been around and stuff. Majority of the time when we think of a relationship, we don't necessarily think of what we actually, you know, are concerned about. We think of things that, you know, we have already been programmed to think about. Because I let you know that we really don't know what the fuck we're doing. <laughs> Think about how many women are influenced by Disney movies. Think about all the women in, that you know that like Disney movies and stuff, and they're looking for their prince and their their prince charming and knight in shining armor and stuff. But guess who that motherfucker is? The nice guy, the same nice guy that you're rejecting or whatever. And he's you know, you know I'm just not attracted to him. Blah blah all this stuff. We also have to wonder if you're not attracted to someone being nice to you. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> Oh man. Oh man, it's true, man. It's true. Cause you gotta ask yourself these tough questions though. I asked myself a lot of these tough questions, man. I was like, do I do I am I attracted to I thought, you know, was I attracted to a party girl? Was I attracted to someone that wants to do things like that? And I'm like, no, I wasn't attracted to that. I was attracted to someone that's a little bit more extra, that's an extrovert, because I'm an introvert. I was attracted to I didn't want someone exactly like me. I wanted someone that's opposite, a little bit opposite of me. Mainly because, like, I get aggravated with myself. But during the time that I've been divorced stuff and mainly single, I come to love my not uh, love. I always love. I feel like I always love myself, but I come to appreciate myself even more. And the things that I, I thought other people found weird and quirky about myself, I come to realize this shit is great, bro. <laughs> this shit is great. Like I. I really enjoy the person that I have. Like, I like the person that I am a lot. <laughs> In fact, I like the person I am so much that I'd rather sit and have conversations with myself than have conversations with other people. In fact, I probably have more conversations with myself in my head than I'll ever talk to anyone ever on the fucking face of this planet. That includes my family members, my kids, everybody. Because, you, we, like I said before, this podcast is me expressing my thoughts. Bro, this podcast... It's me having a conversation with my fucking self. 
Because if you pay attention, I answer myself. Because <laughs> when I correct myself and I make a mistake, it's not a mistake. I'm just answering myself. I'm rebuttaling my own self within my own topic of discussion. What? That's a mind fuck right there. <laughs> You're probably like, this motherfucker's insane. And you know what? Who cares? I could be. I could, this could be why I'll never find another woman. Everybody keeps telling me, oh, you know, you'll find another woman. You'll find that significant other and stuff, whatever. I'm like, nah, I probably won't. Odds are, you know, I should because it's like 8 billion people and stuff. But at the same time, you know, maybe I have to explore the world to find another woman. Maybe the other woman won't be right down the street from me. Maybe it should be, you know, five hours away. Maybe it should be five states away. You never know. Who knows? You won't know until you try. It is what it is. So that whole nice guy thing stuff, you know, I just don't try to, how about you try? How about you try? If it doesn't work out, then it doesn't work out. And then I know some some people, some women in particular will be like, well, you didn't you get emotionally invested and you want to be emotionally hurt. I'm okay with being hurt from emotional pain. I told you. This happened last year. I looked the woman in the eyes. I told her I loved her and I wanted to be with her and stuff. And I know she probably didn't think like I was crazy. Like, how did he love me? He didn't know. No, because I've been sitting there paying attention to you. And I've been sharing intimate moments and I've been thinking a lot about you and I'm paying attention because I'm, I'm being observant and it's still my idea of love that I think I understand love could be right well shit there's no right or wrong with love it's just your own understanding anyway because like I said we fucking around just making this shit up <laughs> we're just making this shit up <laughs> because your, your, your pet companion shows undeniable love and unconditional love and loyalty the motherfuckers don't give a shit and I'm starting to think these motherfuckers is programmed just to serve us because that makes no fucking sense. I don't know why my cat loves me, but she does. <laughs> so like I said, I, I was looking, I looked the woman in the eye and I told her I love her and stuff and everything. And she wanted to be with me and I was like, okay, bye. Never talk to you again. And I felt sad and stuff and I was hurtful and, you know, and then I felt bad about it. And then guess what I did? Went and talked to another woman. <laughs> I went and talked to another woman about the previous woman. In real, in reality, in real reality, I really was just try to, you know, have a, a more of an understanding because I knew the woman that I was talking about didn't necessarily tell me everything, and she told told me some things that she's willing to share, and not necessarily willing to share because she's worried about my feelings, but because she's worried about her own feelings first and her own emotional walls and stuff and what she can handle or whatever and i was i'm okay with that and then i talked to another woman try to get an understanding and i talked to another woman because why because i just wanted to talk to another woman she was you know, keep on going keep pushing forward and i was like oh you know it's kind of cute uh you know and then i like it. you know i thought oh you know i like her i like her and you know she's my friend now i wouldn't be with her though i wouldn't be with her i don't even know if she knows that and so she hears this, and she thinks I'm talking about her, and she thinks it is about her, then yeah. And she probably doesn't even know it. But I wouldn't be with her. Actually, I probably, I, she should know, because I think I said it. I wouldn't necessarily specifically talking about her, but I said it. I don't, I, don't, I don't see myself being with any woman. I do have a, a particular woman in mind that I would be with, and I don't think that woman is attainable. I don't think that woman is reachable. And you could say that maybe my standards are too high, but it's not high standards. It's what I want to be around as a person. And I don't think those standards are high. I don't think those standards are anything other than just my own standards, my own perspective of what I want to be around. And I don't think I'll ever find that woman to be with. And I'm okay with that. And I'm going to have my moments where I feel sad and I might feel lonely and stuff, whatever. I could just feel lonely because I haven't had sex. That's, that's also part of it too. But I mean, I, I don't see myself being with anyone. So fuck all that nice guy shit. Fuck all that nice girl shit. Fuck all that friend zone shit. We we're all just around here trying to figure this shit out together. And really we're trying to figure it out figure it out and we're doing it on our own. <laughs> Cause we don't really talk about these things. We don't really talk about relationships. We think we talk about relationships, but we're really just repeating the same shit we heard someone else say. And we're really just going off of things from T V and Disney telling us what, you know the fucking perfect love person that you fall in love with and stuff and, and whatnot and things of that nature or whatever. 
And I tell my kids, I'm like, you know what? Y'all going to get older. You're going to fall in love. Someone's going to break your fucking heart. And there's nothing I can do about it. And that shit's going to hurt like a motherfucker. But you'll be all right. <laughs> and you'll, you'll go about it and stuff. And you'll figure it out. Because that's all it is, man. How come you don't cherish the heartbreaks? You know, think about it. No one really cherishes the heartbreaks. But the heartbreaks, the tough love, the, the fucked up situations, that's where you grow. And you know that's where you grow. Because if everything was, you know, how about to say hunky dory? That's that's a stupid saying. I don't know where the fuck that came from. But you know, if everything was cool and shit and everything was going great in life and stuff, you will never actually grow. You'll never learn anything. You'll never have no experience that is negative to 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 push you, you know, to strive to for a more positive outcome or whatever. If I never had a you know, some negative things happen in my marriage, I would probably would have never gotten to the point I am now. So that's why I don't, I would never change whatever happened to me in my past. I would, if I had a chance to go back and, and, and do it all over again and marry the same woman and have the same outcome, I would in a heartbeat. I would in a fucking heartbeat. Only thing I would do the second time around, I would try to appreciate those good moments more often. Whether they were seldom or whether they were often, I would just try to appreciate those those moments, those positive, those happy moments, whatever. But I would never change anything that happened. Because you learn so much from, you know, fucked up relationships. So for all the women and men out there who have fucked up relationships and stuff, and even in the relationship that you have been, that you are in, and a lot of bad shit has happened and stuff, if you're in a better spot than you were then, yeah, well, that's great. That's great. That shows signs of growth. That shows signs of, you know, you're going in a, in a good direction. As opposed to a, a direction you don't want to go in. There's, there's nothing wrong with that, man. Enjoy the bad times. Enjoy. That's why I said the whole nice guy thing is stupid. Because if you think he's, if you think this person is a nice guy or a nice girl or whatever, try it. And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. At least you know something from it. You learn something from it. Because to me, the worst thing... Not the worst thing, but, you know, one of the fucked up things that can happen in the world is uncertainty. And that's why I'm optimistic, because when it comes to relationships and other things in my life, you don't fucking know unless you try. And here, you, you'll find that same mentality be applied to, like, trying something to eat, like a new fucking food or some shit like that. But when it comes to actually, like, a, enjoying, like, a, when it comes to relationships and things like that, why don't you try? Why don't you try? Uh, man, I feel fucked up for saying this, but uh, it is what it is. Some of the females I dated, I wasn't really that that much attracted to. <laughs> I kind of convinced myself, like, you know, this person does kind of look kind of attractive. I was like, you know what? Like, like I said, people always think I, I I I tend to I like white, uh, pale skinned women because that's what they mainly see me with. But I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily find them attractive. What my mindset is is a personality and a certain type of interest and things where. And I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I'll give it a shot. I'll give it a shot. And really, all my relationships are things that I just decided to give a shot. And <laughs> they probably think that they could have friend zoned me or nothing. No, motherfucker. I, I really just out here just winging this shit and just throwing the dice. Like, ah, seven. Let's go. <laughs> like, let me try this shit. That's all it is. Because that uncertainty of, uh, that, the uncertainty or, the whole idea of not knowing what could happen, you know, is it bothering, bothering some to me. And uh, wait, am I fucking making up words? Whatever. But it's really, you know, it, it annoys me because you don't, you don't know what can happen. So the whole nice guy thing or the whole friend zone thing is stupid because you're just putting yourself in a position of thinking that you know what the outcome is going to be. You don't know unless you fucking try, try, try. You're single out there and stuff. You're struggling with relationships, whatever. So that try being with that person you didn't think you were gonna like. Try it. Try being with that person. Like I said, I I sat here and told you that I try. I find certain women attractive, basically, if they like fitness and stuff like that. Yeah, I have date women who weren't really into fitness stuff. I have date women who probably have bodies that I didn't necessarily like. I just tried the motherfucker. Cause at the end of the day, just try the shit out. Shit, you don't know. You don't know. You don't fucking know. I'm looking at certain personality traits. I'm looking at certain things, stuff, whatever. You know, I'm like, and after a while, I'm like, you know, fuck it. And then, then, and really, 
when you start to talk to a person more and you start to realize you have things in common and you start to, to you know, talk about your secret stuff and you build that intimacy and stuff, that builds a bond right there. Why would you not run with that motherfucker? Try that bitch out. Try it. Try it. Try the shit out. Let's see what happens. So that's my whole point to the whole nice guy or nice girl or the friend zone thing. It's stupid because basically what you're doing is not fucking taking a chance. Living in afraid of risk, living in fear. Because you never know what's going to happen unless you fucking try and make that shit happen. And I really like how I brought that bitch full fucking circle. <laughs> oh man, that was a I, that was a great point. I, I kind of I want to end that shit on that. That's a great point. Because you know I was trying to keep my thoughts together, and I was trying to kind of memorize what I was going to say while I was working out to to help make my keep myself together and stuff, and really make the point I want to make. But I'm glad I kept talking and talking because I made the point that I wouldn't even think about making. It just came out in this conversation with myself. <laughs> I told y'all, man. I'm fucking talking to myself, man. I'm talking to myself. But I'm sharing this because why? It's entertainment. It's funny. And, you know, maybe you learn something from it. Maybe some wisdom that you can acquire or not necessarily wisdom. Maybe some perspective. There you go. Because that's all I'm trying to do. Find different perspectives. Try to view things different ways. stuff. Because there are no certainties. So when it comes down to the, the nice guy. The friend zone. It's, it's, you Take a risk. Take a fucking chance. Don't live in fear. Don't you know? If it doesn't work out. It doesn't work out. But you don't know unless you try. And if it doesn't work out. Then you know for sure. Like alright. That didn't work out. So I know. I can cross this person on my list. Like, I don't have to worry about, you know, if it was going to happen, if it didn't going to happen. And that's really what I find really aggravating among women and men and stuff when they really don't try. When they really don't try. And I'm not talking about, once again, I'm not talking about when you first meet someone and stuff, whatever, and you've known them for a week or so. I'm talking about when, you know, you you have known this person for months, whatever. And not necessarily friends, friends, but you're cordial. You you know, you talk to each other every now and then. You text or whatever. You respond to each other. Social media posts and things like that. You, there's interaction and stuff. Take a chance. Try. Hey, let's go to dinner or whatever. Because a lot of times when I, I, shot, I shoot my shot and I, and I tell women, hey, let's go to dinner. Let's do this. It's not because I'm trying to engage in sex or whatever, but if it happens, it happens. I'll take it too. <laughs> I still got dick and balls. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> but if it happens, it happens. But my thing is, you know, just let's go out to eat. Let's get something to eat. Let's get I ask some women, let's get some meat, let's get some dinner or whatever. Let's go watch a movie. You know, if I enjoy your company for that time being, I enjoy your company for that time being. If we build upon, we build upon. If we don't, then hell, this might just be our relationship where we just go hang out and watch fucking movies and stuff and that's it. And nothing else happens. That's also fine too. In fact, every fucking thing is fine. Long as long as we're not being negative towards each other, it's all good, man. It's all good. Good vibes only. They got a shirt that says that shit. <laughs> Good vibes only, bro. Just let it go. So one of my female friends, I was like, hey, you know, let's go out to dinner or something. And she's like, oh, I don't know, or whatever. Or she, I'm like, it gets it gets on my nerves because here you are, you're thinking about emotions and what's gonna happen. You worry about you're worried about fear and you worry about the risk of what if you get emotionally attached and it doesn't work out and now you're hurt. Who gives a fuck? This is life. If you think you're going to go through life without being emotionally hurt, you might as well slit your wrist now and call it a day. Fucking see what happens in the afterlife. And you might think that's really fucked up to say, but it's true. If you're worried about fear, if you're worried about, not fear, if you're worried about, like, you know, as far as relationship and things and that nature and stuff, whatever, and you're worried about getting your heart broken and stuff, whatever, like, this is life. Like, this this, this whole part, this whole part of it and stuff. Like, love is an experience to have. And it could be good and it could be bad. It could be positive and negative and stuff. But you just got to go out there and live in the stuff. Because, like I said, you grow from these negative experiences. You grow from these negative things and relationships. My ex-wife ripped my heart apart. And she knows this. She'll tell you this shit. She ripped my heart apart. She fucked my head up. Fucked my life up. But if I had a chance to do, all, do it all over again, I would without question, without hesitation. Because I learned so much from it. I've experienced so much from it. It let me know who I was. It let me know who she was. 
And it's part of life. This is what life is, man. So so many times we try to avoid the negative things, stuff. But really, just go out and have an experience. And if it end up being negative, it's negative. I mean, you know, but you try to take the best you can from it. Because really, positive and negative, good and bad, it's still just perspectives. I think I talked about it before, you know, is there any real evil? Is there any real good? Because we're really just talking about perspectives. Hitler was a fucked up person, but he was a hero to millions too at the same time. <laughs> Perspective. <laughs> it is what it is, man. It is what it is. So if all you single motherfuckers out there, think about that that person in your life and you're like, you know what? I don't, I don't know if I really like it. Fuck it, bro. Just try it. And you really, if it turns out you don't want to be with this person, then you don't. Tell them. Tell them. I told my friend. I, I, thought, I thought we'd be good together. Fuck, she thinks we'd be good together. But, you know, she's tied up on other emotions and she's worried about other things, though. And she is afraid to put her heart back out there and take that chance and take that risk. So, now we'll never know what the fuck will happen between us because she only got that one shot. It, what Eminem said, bro, you only get one shot. <laughs> this is your opportunity. This is your moment. Take it. If you don't, then that's it. And that's how I look at things. I, I approach certain women and stuff, whatever. Even women I talk to on Tinder and things like that. So many times I talk, I, I have yet to meet a woman in real life from Tinder. And if you haven't noticed, just people meet on Tinder all the fucking time. Whether it's hookups or I have, I have friends that have made relationships from Tinder and stuff. And there's nothing wrong with that. And I have yet to meet one. I met one, I'll tell you that. I met one woman one time from a, from a, a dating app. It was plenty of fish. It was uh, back in 2015. So I'm 33 now. So I forgot. I don't know what age I was at the time. I guess if I do quick math, I'll figure it out. But I'm not going to. But uh, my thing was, I think 28. But <laughs> my thing was, uh, I didn't necessarily know if I was going to like her. There was something. I, kept, I looked at her pictures over and over. I wasn't really attracted to her. I was like, I don't know how this would be, but I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I took a chance. I took a chance. She she uh, wanted to meet up at my house. I thought I was like, okay, I'm right at my house, but whatever. And I told her before, I was like, look, you come over and stuff, whatever. We can hang out. I'm not gonna have sex with you. I, like, I know I'm saying that. And you probably think I'm just saying that shit, but I'm being serious. Like, I'm not gonna fuck you. It's not gonna happen. Like, I'm not. I'm not gonna kiss you. Like, this shit's not gonna happen. Like, I'm not that type of person. Like, I have. I don't really. I don't want to be touched. I don't like to be touched. I don't even like handshakes and stuff. Like I don't, I don't affection is something that I work on, but I also have to know you as a person and stuff too to show to open myself up physically. And it's part of who I am. It's part of my genetics, my DNA passed on from my own fucking parents, <laughs> my siblings, and we're like that and shit. There's nothing wrong with that. So she came over and then uh, I even sit next to her on the couch. And and cause I sat on the couch where I want to sit at in my motherfucking spot, which is directly in front of the TV. Now she she sat somewhere over in the corner, so I'm like, oh, that's cool. And then later on, I think, and we talked and we watched the TV and stuff over there. And then she had left, and then I gave her a hug. And then I think the next day she was texting me or something, and she was like, I'm surprised you didn't try to kiss me. I was like, oh, I told you I'm not that type of person. Now. I was open in my mind. She don't know. I was open in my mind to, you know, bend my rules and stuff. But there's certain things she had said throughout the night and stuff I didn't really find attractive. And, I, and there's certain things that she said or whatever I, just, I didn't really agree with. Or I was, it wasn't that type of personality that I wanted to be around and stuff. But I took a chance. No harm, no foul. And even as times after that, she still talked about uh, trying to meet up with me and we talked about and stuff. And I still never did. And it is what it is. I think I still got on like my Facebook and maybe my Snapchat, man. And she was somebody that I didn't, I didn't necessarily, phys- I didn't necessarily, I didn't physically find attractive, but I was willing to take a chance. And really, it wasn't, it wasn't about her physicality; it was about you know was her personality. I just don't think her interests line up with my interests as far as the things that I like and she likes stuff and some of the, her views and perspective on life, whatever. I didn't necessarily like. Uh, and no, not that, you know, not not that it was a bad thing. It's just something that just wasn't for me or whatever. And that's okay, because it is what it is. But I took that. I wasn't afraid to take that chance to because after a while being single, so, 
That's not. That's not after a while. It's just who I am. I'm not afraid to take that that chance. Because you know, I don't. I don't know if it's a male mentality type of thing or whatever. But you know, you just be like fuck it. Let me just try. Oh, usually for males, it's like let me try. At least I know. Let me at least have some sex with her. But I'm not having sex with these women. I'm just throwing that shit out there. Like I'm not having sex with these women. I'm just. I'm just trying to figure out who they are as a person and stuff. And you know, if I'm attracted to that, their personality and stuff, or there's things about them that I like and stuff. But I'm not afraid to try. Because I know that I'm a very peculiar, very, some people could say I'm very picky, but it is what it is. Why are you not picky? Because even though I am picky, I'm still also willing to try. And that's something that my friends and family members don't understand is that I am picky, but I'm not also, I'm also not afraid to, to try because all the women I have interacted with, I don't, I have not completely agreed or liked the things they said or done or not necessarily like their bodies in the way they looked or whatever. And they could probably not like my body or like the way I look or whatever too. And that's, that's, that's completely fine as well. Cause I don't find myself that attractive. Be honest with you. I don't even, I don't even think of myself as a, I don't think of it. Like I'll joke around, like ah, oh, I'm not that attractive. Or I'll joke around, but I know I, at least I know I look good and stuff. I get away with certain shit, or whatever. But I, to be honest with you, I really don't fucking think about it. Cause it's because how I look in my brain and how I view myself through my own eyes, my own perspective, will never be the same as everyone else views me. <laughs> and there's no way to know for sure unless unless I run through a random. Uh, not around, unless I go through a series of tests and try to figure out if we match. I mean, we're on the same page about how I fucking look or how I come off or whatever. But I mean, I don't. It's not something I really think about my level of attractiveness or whatever and stuff. And and even the type of woman I find attractive, it, it really comes down to that personality because you can see an Instagram model or a celebrity and stuff, and you'd be like, "Oh man, that girl is super pretty. I like her body and stuff." For me, what I find them attractive is maybe the, it's their personality. Maybe the shit they say. Maybe the shit they talk about, you know. But the certain things they do or whatever. Like, hell, they're funny. I, to me, the, a woman is attractive and stuff when I find her uh, her level of humor or her sense of humor is similar to mine. I say a lot of fucked up shit. You know, I find fucked up things funny. I sat here and made a joke about motherfuckers sitting at risk committing suicide and laugh. I mean... I don't know how much more fucked up you can get as a person. <laughs> and, you know, that, that type of humor isn't for everybody. It's a real fucked up humor, man. And I I can't tell you if it's good or bad. I just know this is who I am. I make jokes about death and suicide. And, and I joke about my own death and stuff. Or, you know, I, I joke about things that you probably would not necessarily joke about. But that's just, that's how I process things. That's how I handle situations or whatever. And so so I try to find a woman that is similar to that nature and stuff. And usually when a woman has that type of personality and has that sense of humor, then that's when I really start to find them attractive. And they tend to be an asshole like me or be petty like me about certain things. I find that attractive too. And to me, these aren't necessarily good or bad qualities. They're they're situational, at best, as far as pettiness or whatever, and your sense of humor and stuff. But you know, certain women I dated and stuff, or I interacted with, I didn't necessarily find attractive. I just took a shot. I, I never, but I never, I ne- that that woman I was explaining with about that she was the only woman I ever met. So all these years since then, I, I've been on Tinder and social social dating apps or whatever, or dating apps, rather, I have not met. Because every time I try to meet them, I, every time I'm willing to take that shot, take that chance, you know, they always back out. They always back I've been ghosted a lot of times. I've really been ghosted a lot of times. And then I've been told women, or have women come with excuses like, oh, you know, uh, something that came up or uh, I can't go today or Oh, you know, we can reschedule another time or stuff like that. I just, I was like, oh, okay, no problem. But my mom I'm like, yeah, bro, just, just say you don't. And and I try to be cordial about it and understand because I know they're probably going through a break. They went through a breakup or they worry about emotional attachment and stuff, where some other shit, or they worry about their own emotions getting hurt. 
And then a lot of times too, I call them out. I call them out on it. I'm like, look, if you don't want to meet up, just say you don't want to meet up. There's no problem. There's nothing wrong with that, man. Just you know, be an adult about it. It's okay. But it's not necessarily about being an adult about it. It's their own emotional maturity because they're like, oh, I don't want to hurt your feelings. But, but, and see, that's where your ego comes into play. Their ego comes into play because what makes you think that you're hurting my fucking feelings? If you tell me no, if I ask you out to dinner and you tell me no, what makes you think you're hurting my feelings? Because we all can't handle rejection. I'll explain this to my friend before. It goes back to uh, trying to uh, me uh, paying attention to Buddhism and, and learning about the ego and how really when it comes down to rejection, it's only because our ego is hurt. I was telling my son, he was talking about a girl that he likes in, in school or whatever, and she liked him and then she stopped liking him and started liking someone else or whatever, and he was hurt by it. And first, he didn't want to talk about it, and that went for like a second, and then he started, he opened up and he was talking to me about it. And then I, I told him, I was like, look, man, you're not really hurt that she didn't want to be with you. Because look how you described it. You got mad that she chose someone else that you thought was lesser than you. So really, it's just about your ego. So what we're only talking about is competition. You felt like you lost. And I told him, he's like, he looked at me, he's like, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I know, because that's the same way I feel. That's the same way a lot of people feel. And when I get rejected from a woman... I don't, it doesn't bother me anymore because it used to bother me. And then I realized it's because my own ego, because I feel like I lost because I feel like I'm doing great. And, you know, I take care of my kids. I'm, I'm the things, I feel like I'm the things that, you know, women say that they want to be with, especially at this age in my life at 33. And then a woman chose, you know, is, does it rejects me or whatever. And then now I don't, I don't even be concerned myself with it. I just laugh at it because I'm like, oh, whatever. It is what it is because, you know, we will never know what happened now because you lost your chance. And, and I'm not going and I can still probably offer again. But when I offer, I don't really mean anything by it. I offer it because I think this shit's funny. I just, you're <laughs> it's just fucked up. And I think I kind of told my friend that I did this to her or whatever, but this is fucked up. So there's women and stuff where that I talk to. I'll throw out that shit like, oh, let's go out to eat. Let's go out to dinner. Or, oh, you know, I'll do this for your birthday or whatever. I'll do this, blah, blah. And I'll do that shit. I just do that shit just to see a reaction. Like I said, I'm not a nice person. I'm really fucked up. But you just take it how you want to take it. You want to think that I'm the nice guy. You really, you don't know. <laughs> I am nice. I'm trying to be nice. But I also do, and I tell them, I also do fucked up shit to you. But, because, you know, because I just, I, I throw that out there just to test them to see what happened. Because after so many times of like, hey, let's meet up. And like, oh, no, well, this and that. Or I really want to, but I really got this going on and stuff, whatever. Or I just want to see what they're going to do. I was like, okay. But I'm also prepared to meet up with them as well and go through with the plans. But at the same time, I don't believe it's going to happen. When I ask that shit, I have a 90, 90% chance that. Is not going. We're not going to meet up. We're not. Nothing going to happen. I was talking to a female that I had uh, liked on Tinder or whatever and stuff, and I was talking to her about a month, and then she didn't. She didn't live in my area, and then uh, I come to find out. I didn't even realize that when I first talked, started talking to her. Now I found that out. I still kept talking to her. I was like, yeah, whatever. Fuck it. I'll keep talking to you. You live out of state. And then she was going to be in my area at some, uh, a certain point in time. I was like, oh, we should meet her. She's like, yes, yes. So I don't even feel like we're meeting. I feel like we're just, you know, we're just finally seeing each other in person. Like, I, 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 I know things about you. You know things about me. And I was like, okay, cool. Went to go talk and meet up with her. Uh, went to go talk and talk and stuff. On the day we were supposed to meet up, she ghosted me. She just stopped texting me. Around the time that we were supposed to meet up and stuff. It was around like 6, 7, 30 at night. She just never texted me back. Till the next day around noon, and she's like, "Oh, I'm sorry, I fell asleep with my, I fell asleep with somebody, her child or something like that." And she didn't, you know, she slept or whatever. And I'm sitting there thinking, huh, I "Fell asleep at nine, seven thirty, whatever, and don't talk to me till noon the next day." And I was like, "Look," I was like, "And yeah, you know, I was about to call her out, but I was like, yeah, I'm not even gonna waste my time." I was like, "Oh, no worries." Oh, you know, maybe we could try again another time. She's like, yes, I like that, blah, blah. And then I talked to her for another time and stuff. I texted her maybe a day or two more. And then I just stopped texting her. 
because I just didn't have nothing to say to her anymore. And I kind of think maybe I shouldn't have ghosted her like that. If you want to call ghosting, I, to me, I just... Oh, now I remember what happened. Now I remember what happened. I was like, that doesn't sound like something I would do anyway. I don't want to be a hypocrite. Now I remember what happened. I was talking to her, right? I was texting her and stuff. Because even after that, I still was texting her. I was being nice to her. And I was being nice. I was still being you know, a respectful person. I was still texting and stuff. Cause I, I had a feeling that you know, I know women get caught in emotion and they're afraid to to have an emotional attachment with someone and stuff because they're worried about they're getting their feelings hurt and blah, 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 whatever. So I was I was texting her and stuff, and then there was another time I texted her, and then she didn't text me back for like a, a couple of days, almost a week. So I was like, well, fuck this. Like, now, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I get someone being busy and stuff, but man, you went from texting me all the time and stuff to now just completely ghosting me and stuff, whatever, and then replying back a week later, and, that, and then not even saying, you know, a reason why, just acting like nothing had happened and stuff. So I was like, nah. Then that, then after that, I was like, I'm not talking to her no more. But yeah, you know, things like that. It is what it is. I I still was okay with taking a risk, with taking a chance, and seeing what happens. And and that's what it comes down to. You nice guys, you nice girls, and all of those stuff, man. I keep uh trying to reiterate this point mainly to stay on topic, on point. <laughs> but. It, you know, take a chance, man. When it comes to your relationships, you single people out there and stuff, take a chance. For you people who are, are in a solid relationship and married, take still take a chance. You still take a chance in your own marriage. You know, you know, take a chance. Maybe, hey, maybe something is not going right in, in your relationship and stuff. And you need to take a chance to, to turn things around or spice things up. Not spice things up, or you know, try to have a different perspective on it and stuff, whatever. And, and be you know, be willing to be open and communicate. Because communication is hella lacking in everyone's relationship. Mainly because the person that has that have, wants to say something is afraid to say it because they're afraid of hurting the other person's feelings. But you're not afraid of hurting the, earth, of the other person's feelings. You're afraid of that person's feelings getting hurt and you feeling bad about it. So when I say shit, I don't feel bad about it. I tell my kids, like, look, is be honest and don't feel bad about it. Because if you're honest with someone and you're honest with yourself, it is what it is. There's nothing to feel bad about. Plain and simple, there's nothing to feel bad about. If one of my female friends decided that they wanted to be with me, one of my female friends, it's, it's a hypothetical situation, whatever I'm, I'm explaining now. If, if, a, if a female friend that I'm talking to, or whatever, that we're kind of trying to still figure each other out or trying to gauge. How if we like each other or something like that? All of a sudden, she took the gun or whatever. She she took a chance and was like, you know, what? I want to I want to be with you. I want I think we should be together. And I tell her straight up, like, you know what? Like, I don't know if those work out, but hey, fuck it, let's try it. I was like, I don't really want to be with no one in that in that particular man that you're talking of, but you know, fuck it, let's try it. And whatever happens, happens. And you hear a lot of women say, like, well, I don't want to lose you as a friend. Who cares? <laughs> like, who cares? Who cares if you lose me as a friend? Like, what the fuck matters, man? Like, who, who gives a shit? It's like, oh, but yeah, but you're a really good friend, I, and I just need you in my life. Exactly. I, You need me in your life. You need that person in your life. You don't need anyone in your life. You don't need anybody. Because at that point now you're 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 trying to use someone else to to help for your own inadequacies in your own life that is lacking, and you don't need no one. I don't need anybody in my life. I would like to have people in my life to help me. We are social beings. It's inevitable we will have people in our lives, but you don't need no fucking body. You don't need no one for emotional support. Support your fucking self. Any additional support is 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 appreciated. And will be given gratitude, but it's not needed. It's not needed, and that's what you hear a lot of times when a woman or, or a male, a man will friend zone someone or whatever, the nice guy or whatever, and it's like you know, I, I, just, I just don't want you, you know, I just don't want to ruin this 
Cause I had women tell me before, like, I don't want to ruin our friendship and stuff. I was like, who cares? <laughs> You're sitting here complaining that you want a good guy and stuff. You keep telling me I'm a good guy or whatever. So let's try it. Yeah, but, you know, what happens? What if it doesn't work out? Then it doesn't work out. And it's, it's, this is probably fucked up. But uh, as I was saying this to, to a certain individual at one point in time, I can't remember specifically who it was. Or maybe maybe it's a collective of, of people, of women in my lifetime. The back of my mind, I'm like, <laughs> I really don't give a shit. <laughs> and you can hear this, like, oh, man, he's fucking faking. He's lying over it. No, really. no, 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 no. Because what it comes down to is I've already had my heart ripped out by the person I love. That I was supposed to love for the rest of my life. So anything else and everything else won't compare. And because I had kids with women as well, everything else won't compare. Guess what also won't compare? Me having kids with another woman because I got a vasectomy, so I'm not having kids with another woman either. <laughs> it's because like uh, so 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 it won't so any any pain that a woman does to me it won't is will fail in comparison because you know you already experienced wherever you felt like the most pain. If you ever felt like you died but was about to die before, it, and you get a stomachache later on, you'd be like, oh shit. I mean, it's hurt, but it ain't like with that time I was about to fucking die. Because <laughs> that's how we relate pain. We relate pain in comparison. We use analogies for our pain and stuff. It wasn't like this time I felt like this, or it wasn't the time I felt like this, so I can handle this. So there's a lot of time where women have been saying, said, said those things to me where like, oh, you know, I don't want to ruin our friendship. I'm sitting there thinking, I don't give a fuck about our friendship. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a fuck about our relationship. I just, you know, we're cool. I like you and stuff, whatever. I actually kind of want to see, if, you know, something else can happen. I want to have sex with you, whatever. You know, maybe try it. And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. If we could be friends, we could be friends. If we can't be friends, we can't be friends. You know what? It doesn't matter. And the fucked up thing is, they always say, oh, you know, I don't want to mess with my friendship. I don't want to mess with anything. But guess what? <laughs> I had to stop talking to them anyways. Because what you do with your friends, Throughout your lifetime, you talk to them, you talk to them for a while, whatever. And next thing you know, you know, you move on. You not move on, but you know, you do different things. Where you, you know, a lot of women I've been around has been I've been associated with, I worked with them and stuff. Where even if I haven't worked with them and stuff, or I just haven't text or whatever, I move on. You know, they get a, they get a relationship, or or you know, maybe they start talking to a, a different friend, start hanging out with that friend more. My mom sent me this thing a long time ago when I was a kid. When I was a kid, when I was like 17 or 18, I think. And then uh, I was just actually kind of kept the shit. And I was going through my stuff the other day and I saw it. And it's a thing that says, like, people are in, are either in your life for a reason or for a season. And you got to know the difference, or whatever. And a lot of people are in our lives for seasons. You know, a lot of people are in our lives for just certain moments. And there's nothing wrong with that, man. There's nothing wrong with that. Majority of the people I have on my social media, my, my Facebook, are people that... I only had certain moments with maybe a few months, maybe a year who I worked, uh, who I worked with or who I, who I shared experience with. But I always appreciate those moments. I always appreciate those moments. And if they ever need anything from me, I got them because I appreciate that moment that we had and stuff. And, and I appreciate what they've done for me in my lifetime. And I don't have to talk to them. I don't even fucking necessarily know them. Everything about them. I don't have to. Because... It's a moment in time that you appreciate, and, and and I respect it. And once again, I'm talking about the past. So it, as a present, if something was to happen to them, they reached out to me. I, I use that past experience and remember that and appreciate that moment I had with them. And be like, okay, yeah, hey, what's up, man? What do you need? I got you. All right, I, you know, I'll be there for you. But at the same time, if they if they ask for some shit, I don't feel I don't fucking feel like doing. Then I'm not gonna do it either. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is and I don't feel fucked up about none of that shit there's no reason to feel fucked up about anything ever so you, you have you have these people in your life and stuff whatever and, you, and you're worried about it. Oh, you know I don't know I don't know what if it doesn't work out or I don't want to ruin this friendship I feel like everything's going good fuck it bro Who, fuck it fuck it fuck it yeah, as far as you know you got one life that you're living 
I don't know if we trapped in the Matrix. I don't know if we're going fucking heaven and hell and shit. I don't know if I'm being reincarnated. I don't know any fucking thing. But I know right now this existence that I'm having in my own experience, in my own consciousness, I'm not even sure. I'm not even positive the rest of you motherfuckers even exist. <laughs> I'm not even sure. So, uh, fuck it. Just try some shit or whatever. Just do some shit. I mean, as long as you're not... I'm not talking about like... Uh, you know, you know, people get adrenaline junkies and want to jump off of bridges and bungee, uh, bungee jump or jump out of plane and stuff. I mean, those things, you should be have some type of fear for that. I mean, because shit go wrong, you know, you're fucking dead. <laughs> there's something to it and stuff, but there's also something exhilarating to it at the same time. But that mindset could kind of be applied to, you know, when you do think about relationships and, and your so-called friendships or whatever, you know, take a chance or whatever. It can go wrong. Or it can go, or it can be great. Or, you know, wherever the, wherever it happens, you just let it happen and then move on. Live with it and stuff. So fuck all that nice guy shit, nice girl shit. Fuck all that friend zone shit. You just, what you are is just two stupid motherfuckers on the face of this earth trying to figure out what the fuck to do and trying to figure out how the fuck to go about it. And that's what it comes down to. You take a chance, you don't take a chance. And then and there's a third option in there, and I don't even know what that third option is, but there's always a third option. I try not to keep things in a, du- a dualistic, dualistic, dualistic manner. Basically, you know, binary or this or that type of. You, I try not to keep uh, that type of perspective uh, up and down or left or right. I try to always find that there's always a middle or another option involved. But really, what you need to do is just just. When it comes to those relationships for you single people out there and stuff, you know, go ahead and take that chance. Take the chance. Instead of like, oh, what happens? Or, you know, man, I really don't want to try this person. Fucking try. And then, if, you know, you try for a, a couple weeks or a month and stuff and you realize you're not attracted to this person, then you just let them know, you know, I'm not really attracted to you no more and I don't want to be with you. Plain and simple. And that person gets their heart broken or whatever, okay. They'll be all right. Bro, they'll be all right. They'll be all right. Because you're doing them a favor. Because you're not wasting their time and stuff. There's one girl that I had talked to on Tinder. And she, I talked to her for like a, a, little, a little while. Probably like a, maybe a day. Probably less than a day. She saw, she she, was, she realized that she was like, you know what? I, you're probably a nice guy, but you, you, have an ex, uh, you have an ex-wife and you got kids. That's, probably, that's too much drama. I don't want to deal with it. And then she was like, and then she's like, and she stopped talking to me. And she was like, yeah, she's going to stop talking to me or whatever. Stop texting me. That text back, I was like, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Because now we're not wasting nobody's time and shit. Thank you. And somebody can say that's fucked up, but I mean, I, I have more respect for that person than I do for a lot of people. I have more respect for the person who will come look me in my face and tell me something fucked up. Like, I don't love you, or I don't want to be with you, and stuff, or something like that. And not not in the sense where they're just trying to justify their action or anything or stuff like that. But, you know, I'm talking about in the sense where, you know what, I thought we would try this. I'm not really feeling it anymore and let it go. I'm like, yeah, I, I appreciate that. I respect that because that's what I would do to someone. I mean, I guess I, I haven't been fortunate or I haven't been put in that situation where I had to. I mean, even when I divorced my ex-wife, she already was going to be a split apart anyways. But she wanted separation, and I was like, nah, I want a divorce. <laughs> my, my ass like, nah, I'm done. <laughs> We're good. I'm done. We're good. So, man, it is what it is, man. Hopefully, I, I felt like I made sense. Maybe. I don't know. I try to make sense of this shit. I <laughs> I know I was all over the place stuff, man, but, you know, if you got something out of it, good for you. Hell, if you just got entertained and it made you laugh, even better. If you want to criticize me or critique me or whatever, you know, you know well, fuck you. Keep that shit to yourself. <laughs> I'm playing, man. I mean, you know, you can criticize me or whatever. You can know, you say whatever you want to and stuff. I'll try my best not to, you know, feel some type of way about it or whatever and stuff. It depends on what someone says, though. I get mad at certain things that people say, but I usually get mad because I feel like it's it's not a lot of thought put into it. And it's, I feel like it's not a real critical thought because a lot of people don't have real critical thinking skills. 
and like they say a thought or they have an opinion, but it really just regurgitating or reiterating what was already said by someone else or something they've seen on TV. And, and you kind of know it because you're like, yeah, you're just saying the same shit that that other person said. <laughs> it makes me think of like a, on uh, 8 Mile when Eminem was a, one of the rap battles. I think it was the second battle. We were going against that dude, Lotto. To tell you how many times I watched 8 Mile. <laughs> and uh, he was talking about, uh, he was like, pay attention, meathead. You're saying the sh- same shit that he said to the dude before him and stuff. Because, I mean, I think it was Lotto. Anyway, it, it basically, a lot of shit, we, we think we're having our own ideas. We're having our own, own opinions. But, no, we're really just saying the same shit that we heard someone else say. And, you know, this follow society, propaganda, media influence, and stuff like that. But it's also your own fault as well because you're not taking the time to, to have your own critical thoughts. Your own, to, to really sit down and think about shit and really ask yourself the tough questions. Because I ask myself the tough questions that I, I shit, I don't fucking sat and it hurt my own self emotionally. Saying fuck that shit to myself. Like, man, you know what? You're single because you fucking suck. Because no one wants to be with you, bro. Look at you. You're an asshole. Or you know what I mean? You, you know, maybe you are being too nice. You may need to be more aggressive and stuff. I, I had a moment where I was like, you know what? Maybe I am being a little too nice. Maybe I am being more aggressive. And then I realized, no, that's that's not me. That's stupid. Like, who gives a fuck? I'm going to go to the approach that I want to take because this is the person I want to be. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, no matter what the fuck happens, you got to live with yourself. Period. You can have a relationship, you can have marriage. At the end of the day, you got to live with your motherfucking self. <laughs> you're the one who you talk to. You're the last person you talk to when you go to sleep at night. Your inner thoughts are the last thing that you think of before you go to sleep at night. Even when you listen to TV or you listen to an audio book or a podcast, you listen to your significant other talk, it's really your own fucking thoughts because you know you, you fucking zone that shit out. So at the end of the day, at the end of the night, when you go to sleep, when you go to sleep during the day, wherever the fuck the time frame is, it's you and your thoughts. So if you're not comfortable with you and your thoughts, you need to. Because that's all you fucking got. On that note.